Hi, I'm Andrew Martin, author and director of Rethink Consulting. I'd like to start by sharing a story with you. In 2007, in Melbourne, Australia, the Centre for Education and Research into Environmental Strategies wanted to find out how far the typical basket of household items travelled to get to the supermarket. Guess how far they travelled? 10,000 kilometres? 20,000 kilometres? 50,000 kilometres? No! It was a staggering 70,000 kilometres. To put that into perspective, that's travelling twice the circumference of the Earth. This didn't include the embedded energy in growing, manufacturing and storing products. This is fairly typical of our industrial food system, which is complex. It involves a whole web of manufacturers, suppliers and distributors to make this work and all come together seamlessly. Society and the economy is underpinned by energy, yet we take it for granted and few fail to see the connection between energy, economy and the environment. Approximately 90% of all transport is based around fossil fuels. Ships, trucks, cars, aeroplanes and even rail. What would happen if the price of oil doubled or even tripled? How would that affect your life? How would it affect prices and the ability of supply chains to function normally? I want to ask you a quick question. If you were standing on the edge of a cliff and you knew you were going to be pushed, would you have a parachute or not? Of course you would. We are literally standing on the edge of the cliff, but not many of us have parachutes on. As humans, we have varying beliefs, values and conditioning. We process information in different ways. We are very bad at thinking about the future and we want instant gratification. We're generally optimistic and don't really want to hear bad news. We have a multitude of biases, barriers and condition states. Then throw into the mix a whole bunch of misinformation, propaganda and fake news it's a recipe for disaster. Most traditional news outlets don't want to talk about some of the more fundamental, environmental, social and economic problems. It's just not good for business. Having our heads in the sand isn't going to fix the problem. That's our biggest problem. We want to believe that things will just work out and everything will be A-OK. -okay. What if our assumptions about the future were misguided? It seems that we have many issues and challenges yet we fail to see them because they're obscured by distractions and our biases. The climate is changing more rapidly than most scientists predicted. Already we are seeing exponential shifts in temperatures, rainfall and extreme weather events. Climate change is already starting to impact crops and crop yields and insurance companies are becoming increasingly concerned. Yet much of the public narrative and policy making are significantly informed by the important work of the IPCC. However, IPCC reports also tend to downplay and err on the side of least drama, avoiding focusing on more extreme outcomes. The bulk of the climate researchers tended to underplay the risks and exhibited a preference for conservative projections. The sooner we start preparing and protecting ourselves for volatile and unpredictable potential events, the better off we will be into the future. I want you to think about resilience at a personal level. How resilient are you and your family? Now let's extrapolate this out to our communities, businesses and economies. How do they stack up? By managing risk we can position ourselves for a more resilient and prosperous future. The longer we wait to start transitioning and building strategies and the infrastructure, the harder it will be into the future. The good news is, we can make a difference. We have to act now and act fast. We have to take control of our future. We can't wait for someone else to save us. Why wait to be pushed off the cliff? We need to start planning for the future and managing risk. We need to also allocate capital and resources more efficiently. We're faced with two questions. 
The first being, do we continue down the business as usual road, or do we rethink our current paradigm and change our course of action? We have to ask ourselves, what kind of future do we really want? And what is holding us back from making positive change? Looking at things from a different perspective and shifting the thinking to envisaging a more prosperous, abundant and resilient future is the key to our success.